are the 11 designer bags I completely fell in love with at first sight. This is why I fell in love with these 11 bags and more importantly, what I actually think of them now. The first bag on my list is quite a controversial one, okay? This is very much a Marmite bag. You either love it or you hate it, but clearly, I'm a lover and I fell in love with this bag at first sight. I knew I had to have one in my collection. This is a bag from Prada and it is my Prada Lion Knocker bag. Now I will say I have been on the hunt for this bag in all black for the longest time now. I've had a few come up in different countries but the condition has not been the best. So I did get this one on eBay because this is actually a Prada bag from I believe I kind of want to say 2009 but I could be completely wrong there. And I didn't really come across this bag until many years later. We couldn't buy them brand new anymore. You had to buy them pre love So I came across this one on eBay. It is the wine red version with the gold heart. Hardware. The Kahia bag is actually meant to kind of resemble a book and like the book ends, that is the metal detail on the side, but it is the most, I think, coolest bag. It is just one big compartment inside and then it has this really chunky oversized strap. I've literally had people that have seen this in real life come up to me and say this is the coolest bag out of my collection and then I've had other people kind of be like hmm I'm not so sure on that one but this one for me was love at first sight how do I feel about it now I still love it if I could get an all black version I would probably get my hands on that as well but I cannot see this bag going anywhere the only thing that I will say that kind of puts me off this bag though is the hardware just here if you can see is starting to tarnish on the lion's head it is not too bad but I'm really hoping it doesn't get any worse so no regrets I think this is a cool piece even if not everyone else loves it the second bag that I fell in love with at first sight was another Prada bag this is the Prada crystal shopper tote bag and one of the reasons I fell in love with this bag is Victoria from in the fro had it and I saw it she took it on holiday with her and I just thought oh my gosh in terms of a crystal bag I am obsessed I managed to pick it up before some of the price increases and I will say it's definitely a showstopper I have worn this in the day and I've also worn it in the evening so it's actually turned out to be quite a versatile piece it does come with a crossbody strap. How do I feel about this bag now? I still really like this bag. I don't have any regrets about buying it. However, there is another crystal bag that caught my eye recently. I say recently, probably for the last year. And if I didn't have this crystal bag, I would have bought one of these other ones from Alexander McQueen. So this is the Knuckle Satchel bag, I believe it's called. And they have it in the most incredible colors. They have a black on black. They have a emerald green an orange, this prune color with gold hardware. And and in terms of price, the McQueen would have been the same as what I paid for the Prada, although the Prada has gone up about a thousand pounds since I first bought it. Yeah, I don't regret getting this bag, but there is a part of me that still kind of wants the Alexander McQueen bag. Let me know out of these two in the comments, which one would you go for, the Prada or the McQueen? Now, I do believe this is a tag video and I believe the tag originated with, I've got some notes here just so I get these names right, Lux Lover Sarah, Fuchsia Floyd and Candice Sweet Love for LV. I will tag their YouTube channels down below. I thought this was a really fun idea and I would give the bags that I fell in love with at first sight. So go check their channels out as well. Okay, onto the third bag. This bag is definitely a more affordable luxury piece and it is none other than my Demelier Vancouver bag. I have fallen in love with this bag so much. I have a smooth black version with gold hardware, a taupe version with gold hardware, and also, oh my gosh, this is so cute, the new small size. So you can see a slight difference here. This one is in the black mock rock. I think this bag looks so chic and for the price again I will link them down below for you all the bags that I mentioned in today's video for the price I think the look of these pieces are just fantastic to open you just push this here and then you do get a strap for the bag so you can crossbody it and shoulder it and inside you have one large compartment a compartment here and also a zipper compartment on the larger size so just to show you this is what it looks like on and I do believe these currently the larger size retail at about four to five hundred pounds in the UK but when you go on the website you get your shipping duties taxes everything included in the price you also get a lifetime guarantee with Demelia just for how chic these bags look I think they are so worth it if you are thinking of pulling the trigger on this bag do it 
I have no regrets about mine. That is why I now have three of them in my collection. And you know what? I could even see some more colors being added to my collection in the future. I mean, they kind of give me a Mez Constance, Celine Teen Triumph vibes for a fraction of the price. Can anyone else see it? The fourth bag is one that I fell in love with as soon as I saw it. I remember exactly the moment in time because I was doing a shopping vlog with the lovely Nick. I will link that video down below. I was doing a shopping vlog and we went to see Longchamp, which is one of his favorite brands. And as soon as I clocked this, I knew where is it? Okay, we are down here. Guys, I'm just gonna say, I absolutely hate the UK weather right now. It's January, it's so freaking cold. It is rainy, it is cloudy, but this bag, brings a little bit of light to my day even though I can't use it. When I was in Miami a few months ago now I took this bag with me and honestly I just loved using it. It's so lightweight. So this is the Le Pliage bag. I think I've said that correctly. And this is the wicker version with the embroidered horse. I went for the yellow. This does come in different colors. It came in like a darker green and a pink but I don't have a whole lot of yellow in my collection. So I thought this was a little bit different. And like I say, super lightweight, so you can like take it. I took it to the beach with me. It comes with a detachable strap as well. It's not like super secure. It does just have like a popper closure. But again, I think for the price, this is a really nice quality bag and anything like this, like materials with like a wicker style, I hesitate spending too much money. I would much rather go for a more affordable luxury brand like Longchamp because you never know how long they're going to last. I mean, so far so good, but we don't have any feet on the bottom of the bag, but Oh my gosh, this one is a winner, no regrets. And I'm so happy, again, same as Demelia, I can definitely see more of these in my collection very soon. The fifth bag carries on perfectly from what I just said. In terms of a more controversial, harder to take care of material, this bag is definitely that. So this is the Palen, I think this is the Numero Neuf, and I got this in the beautiful Accru shearling, and it has this gorgeous like dark brown leather strap to it. So. I basically didn't think I'd be able to get my hands on this because it's sold out. They did bring it out and I had to wait a few weeks for delivery. I do believe they're now back in stock again when I last checked the website. And I decided not to go for a leather version, but because this is a more affordable luxury piece, I decided to risk a shearling bag rather than going for like a high-end designer, like a Chanel shearling bag. It does open up here. I will say it's quite hard to actually get into because this top handle, does get in the way. Now, I don't regret buying this, but I'm gonna be totally honest with you, totally honest. I think this bag has left the house about once now. It's very much an autumn, winter kind of vibe, isn't it? But when it's autumn, winter here in the UK, it rains a lot. It is gray a lot, like what I've just said. And I don't really want the shearling to get wet. So. It's not a very practical material at all. And I don't regret getting it because I'm really glad that I got to see Palen's quality and I would like to order a few more bags from the brand. But with this one, I do wonder whether I should have just gone for an all leather version, much more practical. But this one does look like a cloud. Cost per wear so far, awful. Don't regret it, but maybe could have picked a little bit more sensibly. To hell with sensible though. Ooh, the sixth bag is Slightly controversial, I think. It's either one of those bags, again, similar to the Prada, you either love it or you hate it, but I fell in love at first sight. This is the Louis Vuitton on the go PM size, and this is from the limited edition pastel collection. And this one is the color Sunrise, I believe. So the colors represent Sunrise. You can see how pretty this is with all the logos and it does come with a detachable strap, but it is one of the like canvas straps in this like light mint green color. And I don't really like, being completely honest, I don't really like these straps from Louis Vuitton. Um, this is one of the better ones because I quite like the color. I do think the mint green goes with the colors of this bag. So this was love at first sight. I hadn't even seen this bag in the flesh or the colors. I just heard from a lot of people who had seen this bag. because I think it got released in the US slightly before it did in the UK. People saying that the colors are just sensational in real life. And I can confirm this bag looks better in real life than it does on camera. And I'm surprised at how much I've actually enjoyed using this bag. In spring, summer, just throwing this on, going out for some food, it's actually perfect. Especially when I'm just wearing something simple like a white dress, it just adds a bit of color, but not too much, not too in your face. So I do not regret getting this because I know I'd probably try and hunt one down if I didn't have one in my collection. However, I will say that right now we've got the quiet luxury trend. You know, people are looking for maybe less logos and 
I am very much, I've, I don't mind a logo, okay, a lot of my bags have logos on them, but I have got bags such as my Celine 16, which are a lot more quiet luxury, they don't have a big logo on them, and I do tend to gravitate now more towards bags like that because they're just easier to style, they go with everything. So do I think this one might get old with the big LV logo on the front? That could happen, but so far, no regrets. It is a fun piece and thankfully I've used it more than I thought I would do, which is a win. Ooh, the seventh bag. This one's been a controversial one. I unboxed it here on my YouTube channel a few months ago and since then I have been at the mercy of the internet's opinion of this bag. It is, of course, the Louis Vuitton Go One Four bag. Now, again, I feel like this bag looks nicer in real life. If you've seen the Go One Four in real life, it is such a high quality, beautiful piece. Like the strap, the fact you get this extra strap as well so that you can top handle it. It's so beautiful. This color is probably the most controversial thing about this bag. Some people saying they really like it and other people saying they absolutely don't like it at all. But I shared my reasons as to why I bought this and wanted this specific colorway in the video where I've done like a full review of this bag. It's very sentimental to me, what it means, what it actually reminds me of. But again, I urge you, if you aren't sure of the Go One Four, go and check this bag out in person because they are just super beautiful quality. Like you can hear the sound, look at this of the bag, oh, it's just effortless. And inside you have one compartment with the zipper compartment at the back there. And it even comes with a little mirror, which I think is a super nice little touch. How do I feel about the Go On For bag now? I still have no regrets. I really love this bag. The one thing I will say though, is this bag is coming out in some really cool colorways. And my favorite so far has been this one. And also they've just brought it out in, I think it's called Rosabella Pink, which I actually spotted at Louis Vuitton in Harrods. I thought I would really like the Lagoon Blue, but actually when I saw it in real life, I really wasn't sure about it. Online it looked awesome, but in person, no. The Rosabella Pink, however, really gorgeous. If I hadn't have got this one, I would probably be buying the pink one right now. So no qualms with this bag. The only thing is I can see them getting addictive because they're bringing them out in so many cool colors. Bag number eight on my list is another one that I loved wearing when I was in Miami. In fact, it was the most perfect bag along with the Longchamp. And that is my Marc Jacobs Sequin The Tote Bag. Love at first sight. I remember clocking this in a flannel store, I believe it was, and I just knew. I am getting mermaid vibes. Just look at the iridescent colors of this. We don't have the big The Tote Bag on the front. We just have that. But you can also spin it around and just have it plain if you wanted to. It does come with a detachable strap. And in terms of a more casual evening bag, or even like a day bag, if you just wanna be a little bit extra, this is perfect. They don't cost the earth, it is Marc Jacobs, so again, way more affordable luxury. So a theme here, my shearling, the wicker, and an all sequin bag, I decided to go for cheaper, more affordable options, and I don't regret that at all because it allows me to test a style out before investing thousands potentially in a different brand. This one I'm super happy with though. I don't feel like I need another sequin bag in my collection. This one just fulfills all my dreams. Bag number nine is a very special bag. If you're a subscriber, you will already know which bag this is because it is the one that I would grab if my house was on fire. This is the bag. This is the bag I would go for. This is exactly what would happen. This was love at first sight. This was one of those moments where it came up. So I did buy this pre-loved. Look at her. The Chanel old medium boy bag with the pearls, the champagne gold hardware, everything about this piece is sheer perfection. So as soon as it came up, because you could only get, I believe at the time, the smaller size of this one, I could not get hold of the old medium size, which is the size I much prefer. I prefer this slightly larger one because this bag is deceivingly small, believe it or not. And you need this size if you would like to fit your phone and keys and a few other bits inside. You need the old medium size or a medium version of this bag. Anyway, it came up and honestly, my heart skipped a beat. It really did, like my heart was in my throat and I messaged her and I said, is this still available? She said, yes. I said, okay, I'm gonna come down to you. She had um, a wedding business. She was actually really, really lovely. I'm coming down to you and I will pick it up and I will pay you direct transfer. So then we don't have to worry about postage, things getting lost, insurance, all of that. I'm gonna make it super easy for you. And literally, as I got there, someone else was on the phone just re-asking her, has she come to pick it up? Because if she hasn't, she really wanted it. So it was a close call. 
getting this bag. It really was, and I have no regrets. Um, I would buy this bag back in a instant if I could, but because it's limited edition from Chanel, it would be really hard to get a new version of it, but no regrets on this, absolutely no regrets. I'm really glad. Sometimes I get a bit nervous making a really quick decision like that, but I just knew. I just knew. Whew, what a video. Okay, the 10th bag that I fell in love with at first sight. So the style of this bag, I debated for a while, but when I saw it in this particular colorway option, if you will, I knew and I ordered it straight away. This is the Christian Dior book tote bag and this is in the Jardin print. So you can see beautiful flowers and birds on this bag and this is the, it's a new small size. It's been out for a while now, but at the time it was one of the first in this size to come out and I just love it. I will say this bag has been surprisingly easy to style because it's actually quite a neutral. Um, it does actually add a bit of color to an outfit. So if I'm wearing kind of like a white coat or a really simple monochrome outfit, this is a really beautiful piece. However, I am slightly jaded about this bag because <laughs> I'm gonna be doing a video very soon on the brand new designer bags that are out now or coming out very soon. If you aren't subscribed already, make sure you are because you aren't going to want to miss that. But the book tote bag has now been brought out with crossbody like shoulder straps on them. Finally, I believe we've been asking as a community for gosh knows how long, so, so long. I haven't seen this particular style with a crossbody strap available, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm slightly frustrated because obviously I now have a version that doesn't have that feature. Maybe I should have waited, um, but I've actually quite enjoyed having this in my collection. I knew it wasn't going to be the most practical piece, but I don't regret it because the Christian Dior book toe is just so iconic from the brand, isn't it? Glad that I've got one. Maybe haven't used it as much as I'd like because it is quite structured and open and sometimes I feel like things might just fall out of it. But in terms of how beautiful it is, no regrets there. And finally, bag number 11 that I fell in love with. Now it was a similar situation to what happened with the Chanel boy bag. I had to think really fast and I had no plans to buy this bag. I was doing some research, I think it was for my website to find out some new prices and this popped up and it is my Louis Vuitton Capucine. This is in the limited edition Stardust colorway. It has the beautiful pearl inlay and you might be able to see it's kind of like a yellow and pink. So it looks kind of apricot. In some lights it looks more yellow, in other lights it looks more pink and it kind of gives off like an iridescent effect. This is in the BB size. Now I have already had the Capucine bag, the BB, in my collection before in a black with a python handle. And I will say that I find the Capucine bag can get quite heavy because they are such fantastic quality. And therefore I decided basically just to invest in the mini versions because they are just super cute. So I also have a red one of these as well. But for the price that this one was, I could not say no. It was pre-loved and I believe there was some kind of pricing error. Like it seems crazy how much I paid for it. I paid just over 2000 pounds. I believe it should have been easily just over 3000 pounds. I've had it authenticated, it's all good. The retailer that I purchased it from has money back guarantees, all of that good stuff. And I paid on my credit card as well, just to be doubly safe in case anything did go wrong with the authenticity. Now this bag retailed at at around five and a half thousand pounds again because it's a limited edition and it has the pearl inlay so it's kind of an extra special version of the bag and um when I was searching for this piece of information, it popped up right at the top of Google and I was like, no way, that price is just not right. But it was, and I literally spent the entire day thinking about it and the very next day I purchased it because I knew that if I'd logged on and it wasn't available, I would have been so upset. So I just decided to bite the bullet, order it, and then I could always return it because they did offer a returns policy as well. No regrets. Oh my gosh, this has been one of my best purchases. Getting something as well for a really great price. I love buying pre-loved. It promotes a more circular economy. You can save a lot of money and you can also get limited edition pieces that you can no longer buy from the brands anymore. Like you cannot buy this from Louis Vuitton and look how gorgeous this bag is. I nearly missed out, but again, I'm really glad I thought fast. Same with the Chanel boy bag. So no regrets. And I do keep my eye out now in case I find another bargain like this one. As mentioned, for all the bags that are still available, I have linked them down below in the description box for you. Make sure you do not go anywhere because coming up next, the seven luxury items I would not buy again and why. Save yourself some costly mistakes, enjoy. 